The Origin and Mythos of Jormungandr Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. Today we are going to talk about the origin and mythos of Jormungandr. Before we get started with the video, don't forget to smash the like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get started. Jormungandr is known as the World Serpent and the Midgard Serpent, and he is in charge of defending the Kingdom of Midgard. Both of these titles pertain to the same being. He is the son of the deity Loki and the giantess Angbrua, in addition to being the brother of Fenrir, who is known as the Great Wolf, and Hel, who is known as the Queen of the Dead. Additionally, he is gigantic himself. When the event known as Ragnarok, also called the Twilight of the Gods, takes place, he plays both the murderer and the victim of the god Thor. When the gods of Asgard received a prophecy that Fenrir, Jormungandr, and Hel would cause trouble in the future, they were living with their mother in Jotunheim, the land of the giants. Odin ordered that they be taken away from there while they were still relatively young. In the end, he chained Fenrir to a rock on an island, hurled Jormungand into the ocean, and flung Hel into the dreary realm of the dead beneath the icy Niflheim. Jormungandr grew to such enormous proportions that it is said that he encircled the world, which was seen as a flat disc, while grasping his tail and his teeth the entire time. At the end of the world, which is referred to as Ragnarok, Fenrir would break free. Hale would provide him with an army of the dead, and Jormungandr would let his tail go and emerge from the ocean to join the forces of chaos in their struggle against the gods and their hero. It seems likely that almost all of the gods would perish, but those that survived would continue to battle their foes and keep the peace, ensuring that order would be restored when a new world rose from the ashes of the old one. Therefore, current academics consider Jormungandr to be a transforming force along the same lines as the serpent symbolism seen in the majority of ancient belief systems, if not all of them. In many different cultures such as Egypt, Mesopotamia, and many more, serpents are shown either as a threat to the established order or as an integral component of it, regardless of their role. However, serpents are always viewed as transformative entities. Origin He is one of the oldest creatures in Norse mythology, and his name is pronounced your um, Mun, Gander, also given as Jormungand and meaning huge monster or great beast. The name Jormungandr is found engraved on a number of rune stones and other objects dating from before and during the early Christian era. Oral transmission was the primary means through which the early Norse stories were transmitted from one generation to the next until the advent of Christianity in Scandinavia and Iceland, at which point literate monks began writing down the stories. Before the arrival of Christians, the only form of written communication in the area was the use of runes, which, according to historian John Lindo, are utilitarian, and despite popular misconceptions, they have little to say about mythology or magic. Runes were used on memorial stones and rune sticks to communicate brief messages or to express the main idea of a narrative, such as in the fishing expedition, but they were not used for writing lengthy texts. It is unclear why Christian monks preserved pagan tales, except when citing them to attack and dismiss the earlier belief system. But by the 13th century, the tradition of preserving older myths had been established, and its greatest contributor was the Icelandic historian and mythographer Snart. Sturluson, who preserved oral traditions in written form, Sturluson's prose Edda drew on works like the Ragnar's Drapa and Esdrapa to construct a complete narrative from the various stories and variants of the Norse gods and the ancient heroes they inspired. Among the various opponents that attacked the established order, Jormungandr appears frequently and is virtually always at odds with Thor, the god of thunder and Odin's son. Jormungandr had reason to be critical of Odin. Odin had thrown him into the water when he was only a little serpent, expecting he would drown. Fenrir, Jormungandr's brother, would be Odin's sworn enemy while Thor, for reasons never fully explained, would be Jormungandr. The narrative of Odin snatching Loki's offspring and binding them in some form can be found in Chapter 34 of Sturluson's 13th century prose Edda. Once Odin has hurled Jormungandr into the sea, the serpent proceeds to expand, much like Fenrir does on land, until he encircles Midgard, the realm of mortals. Thor is successful and kills Jormungandr in an earlier version of the fishing trip story. 
But this does not match with the serpent's subsequent appearance at the end of the world, where he is one of the god's main opponents. Jormungandr, together with Fenrir, Hale, Loki, and the Fire Giants, is the chaotic force that breaks the world order established by the gods, ushering in a new world in the Ragnarok story. Jormungandr fulfills the same role as mythological serpents in other ancient societies. Because of their capacity to shed their skin and appear new, snakes and serpents nearly invariably represent transformation, rejuvenation, or any shift in a state of being or consciousness. The serpent was linked with the god Ninazu, son of the healing goddess Gula, who carried a serpent encrusted staff and assisted his brother Damu in transporting souls from life to the afterlife. In the biblical story of the fall of man, the serpent delivers the temptation that leads to Adam and Eve's banishment from the Garden of Eden. There are many examples of serpents as transforming agents in cultures around the world, but Apophis from ancient Egypt is arguably the most similar to Jormungandra. Apophis, also known as Apep, was the great serpent who attempted to murder the sun god Ra every night in order to return the world to primordial chaos and undo the god's labor of order. The barge of Ra sailed across the sky from dawn to dusk before descending into the underworld. Apophis would try to attack the ship all night, which was defended by the gods and the souls of the righteous dead. The living held rights to support and encourage those aboard the boat and their efforts were rewarded the next morning when they saw the sun rising and realized Ra was safe and life would go on as usual. Because his attacks demanded the attention and effort of the living who consequently participated in each new daybreak. Changing darkness into day, Apophis is viewed as a transformative entity. Both Apophis and Jormungandr strive to destroy the present order, but Apophis fails while Jormungandr succeeds. Ragnarok had been decreed by the Norns fates, since the dawn of time and there was no turning back. The gods, like their opponents, knew they would die in the great last fight, yet the conflict had to be waged anyway. At the appointed time, Ragnarok would be ushered in by the disintegration of human relationships and conventions, which would be accompanied, or followed, by the arrival of dreadful winters with no summer. In Norse mythology, Fenrir breaks free from his chains and causes the destruction of the Nine Kingdoms. At the same time, his son Skull consumes the sun, and his other son Hadi consumes the moon, leaving the kingdoms in a state of perpetual night. While Fenrir howls at the gates of hell, the giant Grim propels the ship Nagelfar across the waters. This provides Loki with an army of the dead as well as a ship that is captained by Loki and carries not only this army, but also searching his other fire giants to the battleground at Vigrid. Ragnarok is the last confrontation between Thor and Jormungandr, which takes place when the two finally face each other in combat. Thor is able to kill the serpent, but Jormungandr has poisoned him to such an extent that he can hardly walk more than nine steps before passing out. Fenrir kills Odin, who is then slain by Odin's son Vidar. Loki kills and is killed by the deity Heimdall, and Heimdall kills and is killed by Loki. When Surtur ignites the world fire, all nine realms are consumed by the flames. Yet the forces of order ultimately triumph and a new world is born from the ashes of the previous one. Jormungandr, like Fenrir and Hel, is a force that brings about transformation despite the fact that he is portrayed in the stories as being evil. All three fit the description that John Lindo gives of the bound monster. It is a creature that is held captive by those who wish to keep the status quo, but it eventually breaks free and destroys the established order so that something new can take its place. That's a wrap on the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.